Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are having an unusual service this morning uh, because Simon Morley, uh, just, just in the last couple of days, came down with a cold. He's tested negative for COVID, that's good, but we don't have an organist this morning. So we're going to sing a cappella. Uh, and uh, the choir will be leading us in the hymn singing. Uh, and, and I just ask that you sing out. Uh, they will lead you, but uh, they'll need your help as well. Uh, and uh, this will be, will be uh, Eastern Orthodox Christians without an organ uh, this morning. Thank you, we'll begin in a, a moment. We will also say the Gloria in excelsis instead of sing it. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We, we praise thee, thee. We, we bless you, we worship you. I'm sorry, wrong. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who didst wonderfully create and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the flock, the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. 
I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the great pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your light heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, 
they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Contrary to what your bulletin says, I'm not Father Goodhart. Uh, we didn't catch the error in the bulletin until after they had been printed. And so uh, I apologize for that mistake. We're in the midst of the beautiful season of Christmas. In today's gospel, we've now passed from Jesus' birth, however, all the way 12 years to the boy Jesus at the age of 12. It was the feast of the Passover, and the Holy Family traveled to Jerusalem to observe the feast. When it was over, they started the journey back home, along with other relatives and friends. It was probably a very large group who had traveled with them. Mary and Joseph assumed that Jesus was with the group, but discovered after they had been gone for a whole day that he wasn't with them. Well, we aren't given many details Luke is the only account of the gospel that includes this story, and this story is only nine verses long. Furthermore, it's the only glimpse that we have in the accounts of the gospel of Jesus as he was growing up. Let's think a bit about Jesus. We know that he is fully human, and fully divine. He's one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. We know he's obviously intelligent. Certainly Jesus was the epitome of the gifted child. And in this story, he's an adolescent. We don't know how we don't know how he came to the realization of his calling or exactly when it occurred. When Mary and Joseph caught up with him, he said, how is it that you sought me? 
Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? That certainly appears to be a sensing of his vocation at the age of 12. So Jesus finds himself in the temple along with some of the most devoted people of Israel and he's drawn to these people. His mother and father, foster father had prepared him well so that adults who were immersed in the faith were impressed by his knowledge. He'd found his niche. He was fully at home. Do you remember, those of you who aren't, do you remember when you were a teenager and you found something in your life that you could really sink your teeth into? Nothing else mattered. You'd found your true home. I suspect that something like this was going on with our Lord. He knew that he was strongly drawn to his heavenly Father, and that was all that mattered. We're also not given much information about what Mary and Joseph went through as they looked for their son. Mary said when she saw Jesus, son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. Anxiously indeed, they'd looked for three whole days until they finally found him. They must have been frantic. Put yourself in their position. What kind of parents are we anyway, they might have thought as they were looking. How could we leave Jerusalem without making sure he was with us? How could we live with ourselves if something happened to him? On the other hand, he knew when we were supposed to leave. We'd given him explicit instructions regarding when we would be leaving and from where. This is just like him to do something like this. He's always striking out on his own, not thinking about the consequences. He never thinks about us and how his actions affect us. When we finally catch up with him, he's going to get a tongue lashing. I have one question that kind of nags me when I think about this story of the adolescent Jesus, the very intelligent, gifted Jesus in the temple. And there's no way of knowing except when to, we get to ask questions in the next life. When Jesus was confronted by his mother and foster father in the temple, where he obviously isn't remorseful at what he put his parents through, I wonder if he was tempted to, or maybe even did, roll his eyes up into his head when his mother chastised him. You know, that's a very adolescent thing to do. I'm not sure if it's sinful or not. If it's sinful, then he didn't do it. <laughs> but if it isn't, he might have. That's something to ask in the next life. At any rate, Mary and Joseph finally found Jesus. They were relieved and not a little perturbed I suspect it wouldn't be the last time that their parenting skills would be tested. We're told that even though he felt he must be in his father's house, he returned with his parents and was obedient to them. Now this is a good lesson for all of the adolescents in the congregation. 
about how you should behave when you disagree with your parents, when even you think maybe you're right and they're wrong, you should be obedient to them. Of course, I don't know that any of this actually happened, other than the few scant details that St. Luke gives us. What I've done is look at the story from my own perspective of being a parent, having reared two children, neither of which, I hasten to add, is God incarnate, And even though I'm separated from the temple story by 2,000 years, I suspect that there are certain things that are common to parents of any age. I wonder if Mary and Joseph ever asked themselves, am I being a good parent to Jesus? Will he turn out like he should because I've done the right things? Or will he somehow take a wrong turn because of something I did? or didn't do. We have an attitude today that parents somehow have the power to determine how their children will turn out. That as the Bible says, as the twig is bent, so grows the branch. And then when our children don't measure up to our expectations, when they make those inevitable mistakes, when they sometimes fall away from the church. Parents often blame themselves. It must have been something they did or didn't do. And of course, what we do as parents is very important. It's a vocation from God. And it's crucial that we bring our children up as faithfully as we can. But in the end, each person is different and makes his or her own free choices. As one writer put it, we will parent imperfectly, our children will make their own choices, and God will mysteriously and wondrously use it all to advance his kingdom. When Jesus hung on the cross, I wonder what his mother thought. And if she questioned whether or not she had done something wrong that led Jesus to this horrible end, what looked like a horrible end. Whatever questions she may have had were answered when she saw the risen Lord. In this Christmas tide, as we continue to reflect on the meaning of the embodiment of God in Jesus, may we give thanks for the role that Mary and Joseph played in rearing Jesus and ask God's guidance upon all parents that they may bring their children up to know him, to love him, and to serve him trusting that how that works itself out is in God's hands. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he and shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those for whom our prayers are requested, remembering especially those on our parish prayer list, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Jack, Marjorie, Alice, and Bonnie, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. 
For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Peace, of the Lord. peace be with you, friend. Well, good morning to you all. It's wonderful to be with you this morning and to celebrate this second Sunday after Christmas together. It's, uh, it's always kind of a light Sunday in terms of attendance, but uh, it's such a beautiful day. Uh, these, these Sundays in the season of Christmas when we get to sing these beautiful uh, Christmas carols and hymns. If you're visiting with us, we encourage you to fill out a visitor's card. You'll find visitor's cards in the pew pockets in front of you. Place the card in the offering plate as it goes by or give it to an usher before you leave today. And if you don't have a church home, we invite you to make St. John's your church. If you requested giving envelopes for this new year, you can find those in the parish office if your envelopes are not there, please call or email the office and we'll make sure that you get them. You may have received an email from the parish yesterday about our new COVID protocols. Uh, we are going back to highly encouraging masking. Uh, the, uh, uh, with this Omicron variant that, that is very uh, contagious, uh, we uh, we think that it's we we just need to go back to that, hopefully for a short time while it while it seems to be peaking, and then get back to normal uh, as soon as possible. But uh, and I don't have mine on now. But uh, when I'm speaking, I don't wear it. But I'll I'll put it back on. A little in a few moments. Another thing that we're doing is we had reinstituted the chalice during communion and we're taking that back now uh, uh, for an abundance of caution. We don't think that, uh, we don't believe that that disease is passed easily, if at all, through the chalice, but uh, in an abundance of caution, as I say, we'll we will only have communion in one kind. This Thursday is the Feast of the Epiphany. That's the end of the Christmas season. And you'll notice that the wise men are, are, are making progress. They're over there in the windows. By the time Thursday comes, they'll be right here 
at Bethlehem. And uh, so uh, we, en we encourage you to be here on Thursday at 10. We'll have a, a mass with hymns on that day. Well, uh, it's a different service, isn't it, when we don't have Simon, uh, the organist, with us. And we didn't have uh, time to get a replacement for him. We had thought about having a said service, and uh, I, I thought, well, you know, it's Christmas. We know the music. Let's, let's try to sing it anyway. And with the wonderful help of the choir uh, leading us, uh, we, uh, I think we sound pretty good, actually. So, <laughs> yeah. But I do want to thank the choir, and I want to thank Stephanie Curley, who stepped in to, uh, to conduct the choir and prepare them uh, in, this, in this extraordinary time. Uh, I, believe, I believe that's all um, that I have for you this morning. I, I just wanted to make sure that you, uh, that you know about Epiphany and that uh, as many of you as possible come this Thursday for the Feast of the Epiphany. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become thy children. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.